So notice that a necessary condition for the function phi from a into b to be a surjection is that the range of the function must be the entire codomain B. Okay, so now a new definition. A function phi from A into B is a bijection or bijective function if it is both an injection and a surjection. So once again with a map diagram, A function from A into B is a bijection if it is both an injection, which means that every element in the domain A is mapped to a unique element in the codomain B, and is also a surjection if each of the elements in the codomain B are mapped onto. Another uh, term for a bijection is a one-to-one -one correspondence. So let's look at an example. The function phi from the set of integers into the positive, or uh, correction, the even integers defined by phi of a is equal to 2a is a bijection. So proof. We have already demonstrated that this function phi is a surjection now suppose that phi of A is equal to phi of B. Then 2 times A is equal to 2 times B. And so A is equal to B. And hence the function phi is an injection. Therefore, the function phi is a bijection as it is both injective and surjective. So notice that a necessary condition for the function phi from A into B to be a bijection is that the number of elements in the domain
must be the same. as the number of elements. in the codomain. We have a name for the number of elements in a set. This is called the cardinality. The cardinality. Of a set is the number of distinct elements in the set the cardinality of the set A is denoted this way. Notice uh, we're using the same symbol as uh, absolute value, but when we're uh, talking about a set, this uh, indicates the cardinality of the set. So let's look at an example. The set A, which contains the elements 1, 1, 1, 2, and 1, has two distinct elements. And so the cardinality of the set A is 2. So uh, using what we call the uh, set notation using braces, it does not matter how many times we list an element in the set, there are still only two distinct elements in this set, and, and those elements are the number one and the number two. Okay, so new definition. A set A is finite if there exists a bijection phi from the set A into a terminating subset of the positive integers. And by a terminating subset of the positive integers, I mean a set that begins with the number one and continues uh, to some uh, integer n, or some positive integer n, for some positive integer n. In this case, the cardinality of the set A is that finite number n. A set that is not finite is called an infinite set an important subclass of the class of infinite sets are the countably infinite sets a set a is countably infinite if there exists a bijection phi from the set A into the entire set of positive integers In this case, the cardinality of the set A is not a finite number, but rather a transfinite number that we call aleph null. 
and every countably infinite set has this uh, cardinality, Aleph Null. An infinite set that is not countably infinite is uncountable. And by the term countable, a countable set is either finite or countably infinite. Okay, so now we're going to begin to look at operations that we can perform with sets. The first that we'll look at is a union. So let A and B be sets the union of A and B is the set which contains elements in the set A or in the set B or both. So in notation, the union of A and B is the set which contains those elements X such that X is in the set A or X is in the set B. So notice that the set A is a subset of the union of A with B and the set B is a subset of the union of A with B. And this follows directly from the definition. If a given element is in the set A, then it is certainly in a union which contains the set A. Certainly, uh, and the same is true for the uh, set B. Further, if the set A is a subset of the set B, then the union of A with B is the set B. A union will always be the most inclusive set of uh, those, uh, those sets in the uh, union. So in particular, the uh, union of any set with the empty set is the that other set, the most uh, inclusive of the two. Once again, let A and B be sets. The intersection of the sets A and B is the set containing those elements that are simultaneously in both the set A and B. So in notation, the intersection of A and B is the set of those elements X, such that X is in the set A, and 
x is in the set V. So notice that the intersection of A and B is a subset of the set A, and the intersection of A and B is also a subset of the set B. Again, this follows directly from the definition. If an element is in the intersection of A and B, then it is in uh, both the sets A and B simultaneously, and so it is certainly in A, and the same is true for the uh, set B. Further, if the set A is a subset of the set B, then the intersection of A and B is the set A. And in general, uh, given a uh, chain of uh, subsets, the intersection is always the most exclusive of the uh, sets. So in particular, the intersection of the empty set with any set A is the empty set. And we have a name for uh, sets whose intersections uh, is the empty set. Sets for which their intersection is the empty set are called disjoint. And this in turn means that the sets have no elements in common. That is, if A intersect B is empty, that is, if A and B are disjoint, the sets A and B have no elements in common. Okay, so next we will define the power set. And here we come to uh, a touchy area for some people, so let me first define it and then discuss it. Let the set A be a countable set the power set of A is the set of all subsets of the set A. Now if the set A is countable with cardinality n, then the power set of A, which we denote with a script letter P taking as an argument the set A, is 2 to the power of n. And if The set A is countably infinite with cardinality aleph null. Then the power set of A is 2 to the power of aleph null, which is also sometimes represented with the transfinite number C, where C stands for continuum. Now, suffice it to say, there are more than one flavor. Uh, there is more than one flavor of set theory, and there are several points of uh, contention uh, among the different versions. So for our purposes in this lecture series, uh, we will consider two orders of infinity. Either a set is countable or it is uncountable. And so we will not be considering a power set of an uncountable set. Okay?